What's going on, my boys? YT Dan, back at it again with another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Today is the day we finally did it. Climbed from the disgusting animal planet world of Platinum into the higher upper echelons of Diamond. And now, all we need to do is defeat these mad maniacs and take our place at the top as masters. But before we do that, my boys, I must reveal a disgusting secret. For the first time ever, I turned my back on the Gladiator Beast because the meta has shifted. Somehow, you bail got the number one tier, top tier, number one in the meta, and everyone has turned their weapons against it. And by doing so, it pushed your boy out. And I got a little bit tilted, don't get me wrong, the internet wasn't working. The water and wind festival was tilting me. So I decided for revenge. Full tilt. Full and total tilt. I give to you. Stun. All right, my boys. In my hand, you see Harvest Angel of Doom, which is one of the best cards in this deck. It is our normal summon, which allows us to add a black horn of heaven or a horn of heaven directly from our deck to the hand. Now the horn of heaven allows us to tribute one monster and negate a summon. The black horn of heaven lets us tribute one monster and negate a special summon. But what makes these cards special is not only that they are searchable and spell speed three counter traps, but if you use the horn of heaven to tribute the harvest angel of doom, it will set itself in the pendulum zone, allowing you to tribute it yet again to get the black horn of heaven. Now, the reason why these cards are good is because they provide an engine that allows us to do two things. Number one, add a card to the hand to power up the sarcophagus or set a spell speed counter trap to stop our opponent after setting up obstacles. Number two, utilize beyond the pendulum to to link into beyond the pendulum to search our deck for another pendulum mark pendulum card that's highly powerful that can keep our opponent extra tilted so let's get this duel going so we normal summon activate the doom search for the horn activate the king sarcophagus and the opponent scoops immediately he can see the card advantage he, he doesn't want any of it Drop in on this Ubel player you can see. It's very apparent how this deck works. We do not bother doing a whole lot of combo. We don't even really allow our opponent an opportunity to interact. Cards like Nibiru needs multiple summons. Other cards like Ash need you to search the deck. Unless they're using cards like Ash, maybe Maxi, depending on what I'm doing, they're probably not going to get a lot of value out of their hand traps. So for me, it's to my best interest to make my plays as short and as sweet as possible. And with a hand like this, it's an easy summon, set, set, pass. Easy. So activate King Sarcophagus. Drew into Max C. Drew into Max C. Also could have drew into Effect Veiler or Imperm. But Drew into Max C. So Max C, Ash... Anti-Spell Fragrance and Dogmatic Punishment and Protection over an Attack. If you can't win with this, what, what can you win with? Like, you know what I'm saying? So let's go. Set, pass, White Orwell. Now, like a noob, forgot to flip Anti-Spell Fragrance. Out of 10 games, only forgot to do it one time. Oops. <laughs> it all happens to us all, my boy. Happens to us all. But this guy happens to be on Horus Ubel. Gross. But also, what's funny about Horus Ubel is, well, 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 just in case. He started this and not this. <laughs> very, very good. So... When he does him steady, of course I'm going to ash that. I love two for ones. Ash. Ooh. 
baby. Baby. Then the do. Now look, this is what I love about this deck. It's so good at taking care of redundant cards and which I always find a stun deck to have a lot of problems with redundancy. So because we're using the King sarcophagus, we can get rid of redundant cards or cards that don't serve us in the turn, which, you know, Maxi. We don't plan on stopping summoning. We just plan on stopping him from breathing. You know what I'm saying? Next criminal in for a shock. <laughs> you know who it is. It's your Snake Eye Fire King favorite. Now look, of course I open with Shadow Imprisoning Mirror when I do not have the combination, of course. But this is another deck, uh, not another deck, this is another hand where we open Harvest Angel of Doom, but we didn't open any of the other cards. But you see how it sets up. If we can go first, Harvest Angel of Doom, Continuous Trap Card, Hand Traps, plus the trap card that we're gonna get. So sometimes you just gotta play off of what you got. And this is one of those hands that are pretty much, you know, uh, not powered by the, not powered by the Inseti. So I, I used it right off rip on the first summon. He obviously saw what I had, but I did not know that this is what he was on. So he's gonna go bestials, then I'm gonna flip Shadow Imprisoning Mirror. So Shadow Imprisoning Mirror does get some play here. You know, so technically they can use their effects. They can go off. But as you can see, when he tries to activate, negate. So he tries to beat me up and then sets to and passes. Now I draw into a brick. No, what are you doing? No. So then we go and get and get the Black Horn of Heaven and set it. Now, Black Horn of Heaven in this situation basically says you can't special summon with any other monsters involved in this card because I'm going to get you. Basically, that's what that means. If you special summon a guy, I'm going to get you. Also, Shadow Imprisoning Mirror, your deck's probably full of dark monsters, all kinds of dark monsters. Can't do nothing right now. So all dark monsters are negated. So he swings into the ash, then he pops over Branded Beast and pops back row and then summons Diviner. Now he does Diviner because he, he thinks he's gonna go absolutely bananas. He thought he got me dead to rights. He was like, look how clever I am. Look how clever boy I am. I'm gonna get you. I have Diviner. I'm about to do my full combo. Get ready, eat it. Effect, Valor, eat it, negate. <laughs> that felt great. Then he gets bestial, and I'm like, of course he has more. Of course. Then he brings out Cyframe Omega. I hate it when they bring out cards like this because it's always so random. They always do silly things. Drawn to another Harvest Angel of Doom. Konami was trying to kill me at this stage, so I was set to survive. But because his deck is mostly dark, that does slow him down a little bit. Plus, he is on Brick Nation. All right, so he takes a card from me to deliver some punishment. And I think right in here I get into the engine. No, I don't get into the engine. I draw some punishment. Damn, I didn't even get into the engine, boy. Come on. Then we draw. He summons. Negated. Punished. Take 18. Okay, here it is. I think at this point I was like, I think this is definitely the last possible chance to draw in the engine. Turn eight, we run three field spell, three Emsetti, and three of the King Sarcophagus. Ain't no way we don't see it on turn nine. It's improbable, but oh, King Sarcophagus, good. So we begin to cook with the King Sark, Ash, totally fine, because you know Ash is only good if you're stopping me from sending from deck, but if I've already got him in hand, you know, don't waste ash on that. It's a waste. Silly Billy. Then I beat him up. Just beat those guts like no tomorrow. Beat those guts like I don't gotta go to work in the morning. Just absolutely insane. Life points down to 700 life points. 
All right, now he goes for Branded Beast. Now he, okay, now he's like, okay, I'm pissed off. I'm going to pop the King's Sarcophagus. He literally activates the Pillarman. Pops the King's Sarcophagus. And I had did it like this because I wanted to make sure I gave him a little coverage on the chain block, even though that's on the gate. Then he gives, then he gives Side Frame Gamma. Which is why I'm glad I did what I did because the only monster that could have got negated uh, or would have got hit would got hit. And then we draw two cards. We draw two cards because the card was destroyed. Isn't that wonderful? We draw two cards and we pick up. <laughs> yes, this is true power. So he can't do anything. My turn. Tries to, uh, I think he adds a card back. Yeah, puts it in the graveyard. So we give him more power of Imseti. You know, this deck just can't be stopped at this point. There's just too many. Like, literally, literally went from not drawing anything, then we got everything. So, yeah, goodbye. All right, my boys, here we go. This is the rank up duel. This is the final duel in the, uh, little pantheon of the 10 games that we played. So, primarily, you see this hand and you think, <clears throat> oh, yeah. He's going to cook them and definitely going to cook them because I got to go first. But Pot of Prosperity, King Sarcophagus, Anti-Spell Fragrance, Impermanence, Dogmatic Punishment. That's distribution, baby. That's distribution. Let's go ahead and do Pot of Prosperity and send our cards. And what do we want to add? The Skill Drain. Now, this is crazy. What we revealed was Ash Ash Valor. Skill drain. Scoop. I would scoop. This guy's going first. I'm going first. And you don't have none of that back row removal. And I just showed you Ash Ash Valor and took skill drain. Boy, you don't even know it. You don't even know. So King Sarcophagus, pop that off. Send off the dogmatic punishment. Send off him And then we're gonna set two. And then I thought at the end. Since we're gonna have skill drain, might as well have another beat stick just in case, you know, something doesn't pan out. So pop up anti spell fragrance, and then when the time comes, pop the skill drain. He summons you, bell player, get skill drained, you scrub, walked right into it. Look at him. Look at him. Look, look at this. Go! <laughs> skill drained. <laughs> So now I draw into this absolutely insane. So I draw into the performer pal five rainbow magician, which basically says set cards in the back row means your opponent can't activate spells or traps. But what's funny about that is I don't have any sets. So that would mean if I did it, then I wouldn't be able, I'm sorry, won't be able to activate effects of effect monsters or attack. And if I played this, then I wouldn't be able to attack. So I'm not going to play it, but I am going to exchange it to the power of the King Sarcophagus. But the first thing I'm going to do is maximize the resources by linking off into SP Little Knight, which is going to give me the Bonish later on because I didn't use a monster from my extra deck. <laughs> but then we're going to send monsters from the hand and summon off my beast and beat this man to death. <laughs> we're going to beat him like he owed me the cash money. <laughs> I forgot how that went in the end. <laughs> but, you know, it came together. It came together. All right, here's another good one. Got me to go first. I got the Imperial Wall in hand. I love opening with Imperial Wall. I like to search Imseti. And then, you know, Imseti use, the, use Effect to Send. Because basically sending back a card is really powerful when you go first. And this was crazy. So, basically, if you think about it, I exchanged Effect Valor for Harvest Angel of Doom. That's insane. That's basically effectively what happened there. Effect Valor for Harvest Angel of Doom. Crazy. Then he max C. And then, of course, I've got the Ash. Take this. Punish. Be punished. Be punished. Take the Ash. All right. Then we're going to summon Harvest Angel of Doom. Then he's going to do some bestial stuff. Now, see? Now, okay. That's a little frustrating, but it's okay. Because we still can add the horn, then use the effect to send horn, send another card, and now we got two. 
uh, bodies to do whatever we want with. But what we're going to do is link off to Beyond the Pendulum, which will let us search our deck and add. And because, because this is the last thing we're going to do, we can set in the Pendulum Zone, end our turn, and everything goes back to normal. But what I didn't do was attack with the King's Sarcophagus because I didn't want to trigger the effect when this card is sent to the graveyard just so like like just yet. Like if it's gonna trigger, it's gonna trigger in his turn kind of thing. So I just let it in, in my turn instead of letting him get his search for free at the end or whatever. So then I flip anti spell fragrance uh during the standby phase, no spells for you, Mr. Branded boy. And he's holding that branded fusion in his hand, he's crying to his mama. And then now he's attacking me. All right. Now he can't attack over this because obviously we got the spell. But I didn't know that he was going to be combo licious like this. Ah! Which is which makes me again, makes me feel good that I didn't just attack it, but however, you know, he he got his search. So so now at this point because this card's on the field, I can't attack unless I set. So I got to set this card. So we're going to add, we're going to send a card back. Guess I'm not going to be attacking. <laughs> but goofy on me, we go ahead and do everything. Battle phase, nothing. <laughs> goofy on me, made the misplay, missed, missed game right there because I totally forgot to uh, to make sure that I had set a card. However, funny enough, Branded Fusion, Albion the Branded Dragon, very cool, homie. And then he goes into this Branded Albion the Branded Dragon. I'm a little, I'm a little worried right here because I know, I know that they can cook like crazy. But then he goes into this, and I say, bro. Is this does is this is he okay? How you playing Brandon on EBT? How you not going into Mirror Jade? Boy went into Iron Dash Dragon, had the nerve to move him to the column and pop the King Sarcophagus. I, but then after all that, Goofy Ya this summons this card, thinking he's gonna cut everybody's attack and beat him up. Goofy eyed duelist, you don't have any set cards. You can't attack or activate effects. So now he sets a card that ends his turn. Goofy eye. All right, I draw. Now, now remembering how I messed up and observing him mess up. Do you think I mess up? I'm going to give you two seconds to go down in the comments and let me know do I mess up or not. I'll wait. Ye of little faith. Yeet of little faith. I did not miss. I set a card face now. Now he cut my attack. Now, let me just shout out to you, boy. I went directly to battle after I set. It asked me, did I want to go to main phase? Uh, it, well, basically, it asked him, did he want to respond? Because his effect is main phase. He responded. Then it asked me, did I want to go back to main phase? I said, of course, because I got some links I need to show him. So I start showing them my links. You know what I'm saying? I let them know where, where he can find my website. You know what I mean? So we start getting that banish going. Foolish burial. Don't worry. We're going to bury this fool. So it also was funny here too. This whole deck was really a joke. So it's not even fully optimized in the extra deck. So I need to actually... Um, make the access code line a little more colorful so it's more pops in between um, the, the climb up. But definitely, yeah, this, yeah, he ain't coming back from this. Bully them some more. Bully them some more. Hope Harbinger. So now you got Hope Harbinger. Oh, now he's gone. I hope Harbinger anti spelled this thing. <laughs> access code. <laughs> Oh my God! Absolutely my disgusting. Ah, yes, my boys. The time has finally come to talk about this deck. Now, I don't normally play stun decks, but this is a really good stun deck. I had a lot of fun playing it, and what's really interesting about it is that we can play cards like Shadow Imprisoning Mirror, 
we can play Tyrant's Tirade, pretty much all the Tyrant cards that require you to tribute two monsters. And then also we can play Skill Drain, which is so devastating against our opponent. Also, we have a searchable counter trap in the Horn of Heaven and the, and the uh, Black Horn of Heaven. And then we also uh, have Blanket Floodgate uh, Attack and Monster Effect Negation, along with Singular Targeted Pops. This deck just pretty much has it all. Honestly, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is trap our opponent under these floodgates and put the board in a position where they cannot recover. All of the Imseti cards make your opponent um, punished if they remove any cards. Like, for example, um, Glory of Horus Imseti will take a card from your opponent. Blessings will help you draw a card. Um, guidance will take a card from the banished add to your hand and then protection will protect all your cards from being destroyed so it's a fairly simple and easy deck to play we pretty much stay out of the extra deck but if we go into the extra deck the main cards that i target is hope harbinger um heroic sky dragon which will prevent targeting and then of course we have our link monsters like ip mascarena um beyond the pendulum which allows us to use Harvest Angel of Doom and any Horus card, you can link those two off and search the deck for Rainbow Magician at the end of the first turn, which is pretty crazy. Um, and there's just a ton of options and things you can do with this deck, not to mention all the Tyrant cards that I mentioned, which say tribute two monsters and do a thing. But this one says tribute two monsters and skill drain. There's another one says tribute two monsters and your opponent has to send a spell from their deck to activate a spell in their hand. And if your opponent doesn't have, you know, an even number of spells, they aren't going to be able to play every spell in their deck. So, for example, the Gladiator Beast combo has one spell in it. If I didn't have any more spells, I couldn't do the full combo. There you go. So, yeah, my boys, enjoy this deck. Enjoy climbing and enjoy the ranked duels. And as always, keep it dank.